Any type of research in science or in the social sciences starts with a question or a problem. When scientists want to study a question, they go out, they observe, and they gather data. They gather information in lots of different sources. But it's always in the service of trying to answer a question or solve a problem, such as, is the Earth really warming up? Is climate change happening? What's the relationship between climate change and other changes we might be seeing, such as changes in water quality or air quality? In order to understand the real world, scientists have to create models. A model is a representation of data or a representation of things happening in the real world that's been simplified. Hi, I'm Allison Steiner. I'm a professor at the University of Michigan in the Climate and Space Sciences Engineering Department, and I do research on regional climate modeling in the Great Lakes region. So when we talk about weather, we're talking about what happens on the short term. So again, if you think about your weather forecast and when you turn on the TV or if you look at your phone in the morning, um, those simulations or those model simulations, how, they, how we predict the weather, happen on a relatively short time scale, maybe on the order of a few days to potentially up to a week. When we talk about climate, we're talking about much longer time scales. So it's not just the weather that happens this week. It's the, not even just the weather that happens this month. It's about the weather that happens in every single April or May or June of over a long period of time, maybe about 20 to 30 years. This part of the country, kind of the, the Great Lakes and the, and the central part of the North American continent, are particularly difficult places to predict the climate. The climate's strongly influenced by ocean, ocean patterns and, and ocean temperatures and ocean circulation. Uh, and that's translated through the weather uh, but all the moisture is coming in this area from either the Gulf of Mexico, Pacific Ocean, or the Atlantic Ocean. And because we sit kind of in between those three, uh, those three spots, Gulf of Mexico, Atlantic, Pacific, they're always sort of wrestling for control of this area. So climate change is going to affect the Great Lakes region. For sure, it's going to make things warmer. So the projections by the end of the century, by 2100, show that the region on average is going to warm about 2 degrees. Um, and while 2 degrees might not sound like all that much, that can have big implications on lots of different things in the region. So depending upon where you are on the globe, some regions are projected to get um, a little bit wetter, and some regions are projected to get a little bit drier, and it really depends upon where you are. In the Great Lakes region, generally we expect that winters are going to be getting wetter, um, and the reason for that is we have more moisture in there, it's not going to be quite as cold, and so more of that will fall to the earth as rain. And in the summers, this is where the models disagree for the region. Some of the models show it might get a little bit wetter, and some might show it gets a little bit drier. Um, so that's one big uncertainty in climate modeling right now, is what will happen with precipitation. The research that we did for this National Science Foundation project was trying to understand what drives precipitation over the Great Lakes. So one of the models that we used in our research group was a weather model that tries to simulate precipitation in the same way that they might do for a weather forecast. The only difference is we use it in what we call the research mode, which means that allows us to look at and change different parameters in the model to see if we understand the processes that make the rain happen when and where they do at any specific time. So we try to, we try to represent the atmosphere which is with a series of boxes. So you can imagine lots of boxes in the horizontal plane, and also we have boxes that go up into the atmosphere. And within each of those boxes, we're solving a bunch of different equations that explain how air and water move through the box. We track different variables like temperature, and if the temperature gets cold enough and we have enough water, then the water can condense from the, from the vapor phase into the liquid phase. Those rain droplets grow. When they get big enough, then they fall to the atmosphere. And that's how we simulate precipitation in weather or climate models. We look at data about when precipitation events were occurring, how strong that rain was, or how many inches have fallen within an hour or within a day. And we try to understand how those intense precipitation events influence the runoff and the water quality. Some of the impacts that we're seeing from climate change are, are what you would expect, and some of them really are a little bit surprising. So you see warmer temperatures during the summer. You see longer summers or longer growing seasons, uh, which, has, which has, on average, a bigger effect on, on the, the water quality in rivers and water quality in lakes than a shorter growing season. And so uh, that, that uh, expresses itself in a number of different ways. One is that uh, there's more time when the ground isn't frozen, 
the precipitation is coming down more as rain than as snow. Uh, so that means that there's more time when material can wash from the watershed into the rivers and into the lakes. Um, on the other hand, the other factor that we're seeing is that a lot of the precipitation that's occurring is happening in more intense events. So instead of having uh, 15 small rainstorms over, over the summer, you might have you know, 10 larger rainstorms uh, with longer periods of less rain in between. So the, the combination of those two factors, the long-term average trends, and then the increase in intensity of events uh, collectively are, are, are changing the flow in rivers and then the corresponding delivery of, of nutrients uh, into lakes that, that end up producing algal blooms and other sorts of phenomena.